It was another working day at Bait Beans. Daniel took the actors through the warm-ups. My name is Daniel. Okay? <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to show you is a line face and lemon face. Line face is more like, imagine that you are looking at the mirror. Imagine that uh, this face turns into a lion, like this. <laughs> 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 lemon, you're tasting a lemon in your mouth. Imagine you're chewing it, mm. yeah? And then suddenly a girl comes to you, I kiss you, go, Ew, what do you have in your mouth? <laughs> okay, so, how is everybody? Jade arrived and announced an exciting new project. And uh, I know we've spoken to some of you um, about it already, but we've been asked to do a presentation on death and dying. And uh, I want to tell you first about that. We talked the guys into giving it a go. Two, one, action! And rehearsals began. But instead of getting better, the rehearsals just got worse. And worse. As for the improvisations. I say, I say. Did you hear about that dead man? <sighs> uh, we're not, we shouldn't be told about that. It's not funny. It's a not that hung there about death. <clears throat> this is not the, the act of play. We are here to learn about. Yes. We took a break and asked the team to share their thoughts with us. I think people aren't keen to talk about death and dying and stuff because it happens too often to people they le they've learned over to, to, to trust over the years and. It would become pretty close and very much involved with them. But I don't want to do a play on death. Yeah, something more more lively, like something less morbid, probably be better for me, for my liking. Because I like coming to drama and doing performances and plays and stuff, 
and being in three different groups gives me more of an experience and challenging because it's like all different things we do in different groups so it's not all the same thing. I love that's it and being in shape. Yeah. And it keeps you busy. Yeah. So you, you'd get to do more drama than you do when you're home. So at least it keeps you on your on your feet. It being it the center comes to show and talk about that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Fuck off. Fuck off. No. I don't like it. In conclusion, we don't like talking about death. It makes you sad. How do you think people with learning disabilities are affected by death? then it probably would hit me, it might, it might come out in different ways, like in my sleep, I might lose my sleep patterns, it might mess up my sleep patterns sometimes, or I might get an upset stomach, all different, it can affect people in different ways, I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about people in general, how it can affect them, some people it can make you burst out crying straight away, and sometimes it, it's the shock when you can't believe that's happened. Like for a prime example, when we lost one of our um, buddies, Jack, when everyone heard about that, that hit everyone and some, some members, it hit straight away and they were in tears. Some of us, it took a, a little bit of pro, it took us a while to go through it, to believe that it's actually happened. Because he was a strong bloke, Jack. And it was... He, could, he was like a fighter. Well, because some people die, it really, it's really hard on, on the person. Like, if my mum died today, I won't be able to speak about it, you understand? So, it's better for me to take on board how, how I'm going to deal with it and just think about my other members of the family. And there might be stuff you might not want to talk about. You just want to keep the memories inside of you. Uh, it makes me upset because it kind of like reminds me of like things that will happen eventually, and it makes me feel like really, really upset and kind of mad that my dad ended up so ill in the first place. Because I love my dad and I don't want anything to happen to him. Well, it was a bit touch sensitive, but I can't put it because we were asked to talk, do a piece on death, and I'm very a friend of mine recently took his own life. So, I only found out over that weekend, just gone. And so they hit me like a sledgehammer. So, it was like, oh, bleep. I thought, shit, something's gonna go in me, now I can feel it. And that's what that's what that's when you work the fan. In conclusion, we all deal with death different ways. Who do you think you could talk to? You can talk to hands so about these people, but her some people are much shorter than and so I might not be able to say anything. And people might get in your faces, you know, when you lose someone, it really hurts. Especially, you get a little bit frustrated and it makes it even worse when there's people hanging around you because you just want to be alone. Maybe go to a counselling group and maybe join, because there might be other people there who are in the same boat as them and they could, um, they're all, they're all talking about because they've all lost different people. Whether it's whether it's your parents, whether it's your aunt, your uncle, or even your dog, even it's your pet. Sometimes like that can affect people. If you actually got on with one of the tutors from Bakebean, someone that you know can really really understand you. You understand. So there must be a, a, t a tutor here. I can understand you, you understand? So if someone died to me, I can say, oh, this person, this tutor, if I spoke to her, 
she will understand how I feel and I can go to that tutor whenever I feel like talking because you listen to me, you make me feel better about myself and it's just, at least you're around the people that love you and care for you, do you understand? So it's better to speak to someone that you really know yeah. and to just speak it to anybody because you never yeah. know what can happen. Oh, that's a tough one because there's only certain ways you can do deal with grief, I think. I mean, short of becoming counsellors, which I know you're not. <laughs> so, I know some people have been referred to psychiatry and all that, but they just, at the end of the day, they just pay to dig deep and find out more about your life, where you, from one strut, if you're a total stranger, you don't want to open up to another t total stranger. For people with disabilities, that they, I don't know, a lot of people don't often see their family that regular, so they have to rely on pe people coming in to see them. Which is kind of hard when they're changing all the time. Because you're getting no one lot of carers or support staff, as some people call them, and it, times move on in that person's life or something's happened and they've had to leave and replaced by someone new which upsets the apple cart a bit so the person with the disability is unsure of that they've got to go back to the basics and start all over again well, if they're more regular staff uh, I'd find it easier to see that person down and talk to them and maybe like feed it back to the, the person in charge and take it from there. In conclusion, we like to talk to people we know and can trust.